What a gift this year that Mother's Day should fall on a Sunday when the gospel passage is a continuation of Jesus' metaphor of the vine and the branches that uh, Pastor Barb so beautifully opened up for us last week when she guided us to anticipate fruit from unexpected places. It's kind of exciting to me because early in the, in the 5th century, Bishop Cyril of Alexandria reflected on the intimacy of the metaphor of the vine and branches using maternal imagery. Pretty cool. He says this, Jesus wanted to bring home how lovingly we should cling to him and how fruitful that union would be. Jesus likens himself, therefore, to a vine. We who are united to him and rooted in him share in his nature by sharing the Holy Spirit. We are the branches. Jesus is the vine, Cyril writes, the mother and nourisher, as it were, of his branches. For indeed, we are begotten anew from him and in him, and we are to bear fruit proper to our new life of love. Our very being is linked with his. This morning, I invite with you, you to just meditate with me on this beautiful metaphor of the vine and branches once again, and to bask, to bask again in the wonder and privilege of abiding in the vine. What's it like to abide in the vine? Jesus' words in this passage, as you may have noticed, almost immediately blow blow past the botanical and and agrarian sphere of his original metaphor um, and invite us to sense something of the wonder of of the divine human relationship that we are invited to in Christ and the relationship that God wishes for this disciple community. By the way, when we read the vine and the branches passage, I won't dwell on this today, but I just want you to know that that in the Bible here, the translation that we have, we don't know whether the you there is singular or plural, but I'm going to tell you that they're all plural. And we read these things about us singularly, but it's about us as the disciple community. It's about God calling us to be the the branches in in the vine. Here in this passage, on the one side, we find one of the clearest clearest pictures in all of Scripture of God's gracious outreach to us. That is the embrace of the vine, how God lovingly embraces us. And on the other hand, we get a, a glimpse, a taste, a feel of what it's like to have the experience of being a branch connected to that vine. First, let's look at the embrace of the vine. And I can say it very, very crisply and, 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 and concisely, I think. Here it is. This passage so clearly says that the embrace of the vine means that you are loved, you are befriended. You are chosen. Just stop for a moment and let those words flow over you. You are loved. You are befriended. You are chosen. There's not enough experiences in life on the horizontal plane where we experience any one of those let alone all three of them together. You are loved, you are befriended, you are chosen. He says you are loved in verses 9 and 13. There's this beautiful phrase and it keeps on going. There's the phrase there that that shows us how we are loved. It's It's the little word translated as. How are we loved? And notice that this... As the Father has loved me, Jesus said, so I have loved you. This is no small love. This is, this is no love in the way that it's understood and, and figured out in our culture. This is a different kind of love. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, Jesus said. It's, it's therefore an unfolding love. 
Jesus' love for us enfolds us in the very life of the Trinity. I'm thinking about these ancient writers this morning, apparently, because I think of of Augustine's uh, imagery of how to understand the Trinity. He calls the Trinity the viniculum caritas, that is the the bond of love between Father and Son is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is what binds this love together. And Jesus now says, as the Father has loved me, bound me together in this love, so I now am inviting you into that love. That we are bound together in this enfolding love so that we actually participate in some way in the life of of God, the very being of God. And this passage says that you are loved not only with an unfolding love, but with a, with a sacrificial love. No greater love has anyone than to lay down one's life for one's friends, Jesus said. Which, of course, is the, is the pinnacle of the gospel, of God's outpouring of love on our behalf. And it's a... It's a exclusive love. You know, the little phrase here, the, the if phrase and the phrase that, that is, says, uh, if you keep my commandments, then you are abiding in me. I want to just wrestle with that for a moment. You know, it could be an if of contingency or conditioned, but I think it's something different. I think it's an if of explanation. It's an if that shows you what it looks like. It's an if of of showing you that if you exist in this faithfulness, then you are abiding. And so that's what Jesus was doing. Jesus' keeping of the Father's commands was a sign or a mark of his faithfulness as God's son and living solely for God. It's an enfolding love, a sacrificial love, and uh, an exclusive love, and it's an enabling, empowering, compelling love. Jesus' love enables and inspires our love for others. That's the recurring refrain in this passage in verse 12 and verse 17. He ends it by saying, I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And you do that through him. You are loved. And you are befriended. This passage so clearly says to us that no longer in this friendship are you on the outside looking in, but you're on the inside. No longer are you in servants' quarters, but you have a place at the table yourself. And you are chosen. There's nothing in the world quite like the feeling of being chosen, is there? I have illustrated similar points negatively, via negativa in the past by remembering when I was a little kid and when you did that cruel thing of getting picked for teams, (laughs) I pick you and, and always being the last one is this scrawny little kid to be picked. But one day when you finally got picked, oh, what a joy it was. And, and, and if you ever got picked first, wouldn't that be something? This, this is so much bigger than that. This, is that. this is that God chooses you. This is nothing as small and as insignificant as a pickup game. This is life. And God, the God of the universe, wants you, chooses you. What Jesus is trying to underscore here is not that you don't have some responsibility and able to respond to that choosing, but that it comes first from God's choosing, that our being enfolded into the community of Jesus is the result of God's initiative, not ours. It's a result of God's grace. This is the beauty of being a part of the vine. 
embedded, in ch chosen by God, befriended by God, loved by God. What, an ex what, what a beauty. What, what embrace that the vine gives to us and what great nurture. If that's the one side, the, the embrace of the vine, then the other side is our experience as branches. What is that like? Very quickly, in sort of parallel fashion, walk through those same phrases with me just for a moment as we meditate on this. You are loved. And having been loved, you abide. It's, it's the, G Jesus says it so clearly, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. To abide means to remain or to stay in or to settle in. It means to live in. The experience of being loved is the space-making, expansive feeling of simply being able to be, to rest, to be held as in a parent's arms or, or nurtured at a mother's breast. It's that kind of intimacy that Jesus paints here. You are loved, and having been loved, you are able to abide, to rest, remain, to stay. And then it comes full circle. You are loved, and having been loved, you abide, and, having in, and in abiding, you now are able to love. Because it's out of the strength of that experience and out of that love that you love. Exuding what you sense and reciprocating back to the vine what you feel by faithfulness and living out God's commands in your life. A path toward growing experience of an of abiding in God's love and a signpost or a marker of your absorption of God's love into your life and then passing it on to others, drawing the circle larger and larger and larger because of the love of God flowing through you, exuding what you experience in the love of Jesus for you. You are loved and in loving you abide and in abiding you love. You are befriended. And having been befriended, you are known. And you know. You notice that move that Jesus does? I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. And now I, t I tell you everything the Father has told me. That now... Having been befriended, I don't call you servants any longer because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing, Jesus says, but I have called you friends because I have made known everything I have heard from my father. Having been befriended by God, you are now privy to all the conversations of the Holy Trinity related to life and godliness. That's an amazing thing. God wants you in on that. You're now an insider to the very things of God and in knowing and being known, then you have now the capacity to befriend. You welcome others inside to the table of God's love in Jesus. And the experience of, of being the branches is not only that you are loved and befriended, but that you are chosen. And Jesus says it here so very clearly that having been chosen, you are commissioned. You're given your true identity. And so there you thrive, you flourish. You have meaning. You have a reason to be. And now you participate in the very mission of God in the world, bearing fruit and doing in doing whatever you do to the glory of God. Notice that he says here in this passage that you bear fruit that will last. You know what that little word that's translated last here is? It's the word abide. Same word. 
That is, living in God's love and abiding in God's love causes our life to radiate the goodness of God and bear fruit in the world that also abides so that we actually have this capacity of connecting others to the vine and radiating the goodness of God in the world. You become, as it were, so intertwined in your will and God's will so inter intimately do you know the love of God in Jesus that you are so connected to the vine that you become a co-laborer with the mission of God in the world. I think that's what that little phrase means where it says that now you will ask the Father anything in your name here and you will receive it. Because now, having been chosen, and having been chosen, you are, are commissioned and know your true identity. And in knowing your commission and your true identity in the world, you begin to choose. <laughs> because you're so intertwined with the will of God, you become a co-laborer with God in the mission of the world. And then just one more thing. This passage hinges on a little verse near the middle. It's verse 11. I have said these things so that you may, so that my joy may be in you and so that your joy may be complete. It gets better. Not only are you loved, not only are you befriended, not only are you chosen, but in Christ you are enjoyed <laughs> you are enjoyed what's more exhilarating in all creation than the sense that someone else enjoys you God enjoys you I put my joy in you. And having been enjoyed by God, you are therefore whole, you're therefore complete in the vine, and having experienced enjoyment, you, you exude joy. You, joy creates joy, even in the midst of difficulty. Doesn't it? There's a fascinating place in, the, in just the next chapter where this word joy is also used. It's in the midst of difficulty. And in the rest of chapter 15, which the lectionary doesn't allow us to read, it talks about the world's hatred <laughs> in the midst of abiding in the vine. It's there. We abide in the vine in the midst of the difficulties of the world. Look what verse, chapter 16, verse 21 says to illustrate this kind of difficulty. It uses the image of a woman becoming a mom. When a woman is in labor, she has pain. And because her, hour has come, because her hour has come, but when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. This kind of joy is a deep, enduring, creative gladness that even when it seems unlikely, will inevitably come to connect with Jesus' own joy. Because we have been enjoyed by God. Abiding in the vine, dear friends, we are called and privileged to be joy bearers, to be midwives of joy in and for the world. You are loved. You are befriended. You are chosen. You are enjoyed. Dear friends, let's abide. Let's abide in the vine.
Amen.